Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rang Roo, hello, hello, hello. And folks, if you see water on this map, it means it's probably Shichadrid, because it is. Who do we have today, sir? Left hand side in the blue, we have Soap, playing 17 for Zest with a Maverick Income. Right hand side in red, we have a Steep Knight, or Step Knight, playing 26 Guards Infantry, also with a Maverick Income. Yeah, it's kind of weird to see... Uh... Steps that can be steep, but I, you know, it's at the same time, we see water, so of course we're going to be seeing soap on this as well. Um, 70th SS, 26th Guards, I mean, kind of a standard matchup when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah, nothing really too crazy from both sides, more on the heavier end of infantry division with armored support capacity. So it should be a pretty good run, and both sides going pretty heavy down south early on, wanting to be king on the hill. Yeah, but at the same time, the Soviets are being very, very aggressive on that northern side, though, too. So let's we'll have to take a look at that in just a moment as the initial gun rush of, oh, look, all my 45s are going down in three seconds is, is about to happen. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah, the death on the plains. Yes. Yes, death on the steeps, if you, if you must say. <laughs> Um, but look at the northern side here as well. As we see, the initial kind of gun line has already gone down. We have a ZIS-3 sitting in the back here. Looking up north... A couple of 50 mil tubes that I thought we were going to see an, an immediate push, and I have been, I've been cheated. I was looking oh. for this giant push to happen instantly. 45 mils. This is 50, you know, 50 mil mortars. Ogna Machiki. This could have been a crazy, a great, crazy thing, but we're not going to see that even whatsoever. No, both sides pretty content to just let the north, you know, bygones be bygones. I think both sides are just very concentrated. Microing down south, the Russians definitely got short end and the stick in the step engagement here. The MG 42s going in hard, but the fight for the hill is about to begin, and the 50 mils are opening up from deadly salvos. Yes, they are. And in Volksdeutsch over here, as, as plucky as they might seem on the surface, they don't like getting shot at very much. No, no, they don't. Especially how bunched up here, I think his second barrage from the 50 mils should be quite deadly. Yes, now the only thing that's been very, very lucky for them is the fact that the guards decide to kind of tap out before those rounds do land. Um, now, you were talking about the MG42s over here and all the, the anti-tank for the Soviets getting taken out. Well, MG42s were able to kind of go and clean up the ZIS-3, but they are getting cleaned up in turn by these Maxims that will not be denied. And in those lungs, that tends to be a very, very difficult position to kind of shift. Yeah, so machine gun ain't machine gun, road con. It, it certainly is, and it looks like the the shorter your mouth, the the more vociferous you can eat. Yes, mm -hmm. vociferous is the word of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but they will be fired on in turn. So again, you know, constant kind of exchange <laughs> back and forth, <laughs> ridiculousness here. Yeah, just everyone's going absolutely out of MG forty two, gonna be running the at engagement here. But no, pretty bloody fight in the town of kill. Still feels like a little bit indecisive here as the guards are doing their counterattack. Not a whole lot of... The problem is the Soviets don't have a whole lot of good CQC infantry for this hill person. Naturally, you really need it, because those legionaries and the one flamethrower guy are quite deadly at CQC. Yes, they are. Of course, when you take mortar rounds, I would surrender too if I was wearing a Zippo lighter on my back. Um, KV-1 and an IS-1 actually being thrown over here to the southern side. Cave 1's going to probably bite it pretty quickly as that pack 40 gets a line on. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty short-lived heavy tank, I feel like. Yeah, most likely. It's really going to come down to the IS run providing that nice long-range fire support. We've got the 80 run mill now going to be countering the 50 mil, so a lot of counterplay back and forth in this southern side. Both sides still, you know, wanting to try to take control of the step. You know, and, and rightfully so, but the thing is, is that since these divisions are decently enough matched against one another, it's a little hard to know on the face of it who's going to do what, except for the IG-33 that just obliterates that 45 mil that just hit the battlefield. Um, mushroom cloud of devastation. The period probably following the same suit. Yep. 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 Yeah, you leave the south, especially with more even divisions like his. It's really going to come down to who can secure the hill entirely, because from the air you just set up fire positions, and then that usually gives you a good position to either knock out your opponent's lung position. 
and then just shut down the step area. That's why people push so hard on that seven hill, and you just see matches just completely get dominated by it because it gives you such a good firing zone onto the rest of the middle area of the map. You know, and, and I'm afraid to look away from the south over here, but the northern side, we have an 81 mil stovepipe that's actually engaging some of the Soviet positions and, and doing a rather constant barrage. Um, I think we're going to see an attempt, the uh, 17th going from west to east here, and I I don't know that's going to go well necessarily, but I don't think it'll be stopped without grave, grave cost. Yeah, it's quite a bit of a build-up here now, really from both sides, just the amount of stuff in that town, and it's quite an interesting defensive position. It's usually it's a little bit more just like straight 90 degree angle, but we kind of got like this weird like half and a half kind of splitting right through the town, so be curious to see. It does give both sides, especially the Soviets in this case, a pretty good firing angle. You know, BF-109 getting in an okay, oh yeah, an okay rocket hit. Gonna be forcing them to evacuate the dance floor. Uh, I was watching the 82 mils down south, or engaging the 81 mil on the opposite side, and then trying to go and push after the the flak 36. That's right there. Uh, IS one, as you suspected, just kind of continues to just tank rounds, as as you also might expect. Um, mm. And the 50 mils are now able to start firing again as well. So this is. This, this has that constant one-up and ship that we might have seen a little bit of on Tuesday, which is kind of humorous and yet at the same time a little bit kind of darkly funny to watch. Yeah, just counterplay on counterplay. But definitely feels like Step Knight has this man as in this fire support superiority here. He's pretty much got the kill cleared up, the Pioneer Fuhrer. Gonna get blapped shortly. The ISU-152 also gonna provide a nice, you know, bonus into our high explosive fire support and now the guard dps may not be good at cqc but at long range they're not terrible so if he can just force the fights you know as the infantry come up the hill before they can get in close they should be able to hold quite well and also the anti-tank rifles go quite good and dealing with any two free ones or two free threes and, and soap looks like he's going to try to wash out the soviet positions to the northern side and you see already just the 81 mils have just been crazy Firing so much at this point, one's already out of shells, the other one has 15 to go. And he had a bunch of barrages planned up here. But you can see right now, the Soviets forced to give ground, forced to give ground, forced to give ground. The question is, will they recover in time? And I don't think that they're going to. I think they have enough stuff to, to cause a roadblock, but not enough stuff to cause a, a successful defense here. Yeah, it's going to be curious how hard Soap does decide to invest into his northern push. Because usually we see time and again, like, if you can get the two flags in the center part of the town, that's usually a pretty good dub. But trying to get all the way to the end of the opponent town, whereas quite a lot of areas where you can just get shot from from the side, it's a little bit scary. So might be best for Soap just to be happy with what he's got defend it like Fort Knox and maybe try to, you know, utilize pushing maybe more in the northern middle area or through the line position. Because that's a, usually a huge grind for just getting one flag up north. Here's the problem though, is that you've invested 500 points of equipment, you want to get 500 points of territory, and right now he's got about 50. I don't know. I, I don't think that's going to be enough for him. I think he's going to go mm -hmm. and, and try to push this, and that might be a bit of an undoing as, as time goes further forwards. Yeah. It's like a sunk cost fallacy. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, we are going to see down south that Pac-40 is engaging and forcing back the IS-1. ISU doesn't see him just yet, but does retreat, which is probably a good idea. Stemoviki are going to clean up both these pack positions before they get pushed back as well, so um, two very, very valuable pieces are going to get taken out. 120 points of just, like, pure sexy anti-tank is going to die, well, in fairly short order. Yeah. Also, one thing that does kind of suck here for Soap is he did not take any of the pack 43s in his deck, which can sometimes seem a bit overkill, but especially against a division like 26, which does have quite a lot of heavy tanks, even though not the highest quality of heavy tanks, Having the, the really big 88 mil make really big holes in TM at long reigns can go quite well. Because even that one IS-1 has just caused so much havoc. It certainly can. Now we are seeing a second BF-109 coming with the rockets. 
trying to take out those uh, human lighters and doesn't get eyes on. But his pack 40s, the damage has been done. They've been forced back. And trying to get back into that position is going to be, well, nigh on impossible, I would say. Yeah. And now just the 82 mil mortars from the Soviets are providing good fire support. Going to be counter battery in the IG-33. And the Germans now just geographically aren't in a great spot. They're kind of forced along the defensive area of the hill, the lower side. And they're not able to exert any more pressure from their lung position as the Soviets can just slowly get in a bit closer. And if they can get to the edge of the hill, put their heavy tanks there, uh, it's going to be hard for the Germans to contend with. I mean, it is a literal uphill fight. Yes, it certainly is. And we're seeing right now the IS-1 is engaging a Stug 4, which is a brave fight, let me tell you, from the Stug. Uh, especially mm -hmm. backed up the IS-152. That's deadly enough to kill just by hitting in the same area code. But they go after the 81mm first because apparently they want to kick a puppy. Mm. Oh, smoke up north to shut down at MG-42, giving the Stermaviki's time to push up. Not a whole lot of CQC infantry here from Soap, so... I think he's Sturm of Eki's role, cause a bit of Sturm. They will, but the Legionari are also here in a second, and the Legionari will probably stop this push. But the damage, the, the appropriate things have been killed, i.e. the pack 40s are yep. down, that's more than enough, who cares? Everything after that is just a plus. Yikes. Oh no! Yeah. Double flamethrowers! They go pretty hard. Wow. Yeah. I saw that ending differently in my mind. Um... I'm also going to pretend it's because the ISU and the IS-1 were both engaging there, Oof. as well as the, the OP-25, but uh, that that's not going to be the reason for it, so. Yeah, he's just in such a good position on this hill. Like, he's actually turned out into, a, like, a proper fortress now. He's got anti-aircraft guns, long-range cannons, infantry all over the place. Stuff's relatively well spread out. That's just going to be hard for Soap to engage. Unless he brings in some heavy artillery, which is actually what he's doing. He needs that neighbor of 42 to soften up that fortification. And and here's the question, though, is that if that is a good hit, then is that enough to get him back in this? Cause I, don't, I don't even think that getting a single strong neighbor for strike is enough. It, disregarding the fact that he doesn't have anything to actually follow up on that push. He's got, you know, the thousand and one points to the north... But down south, he's got... I don't even think it adds up to 1,000 points down south. Yeah, and with the southern position, how it, like, snowballs here, is that with a neighbor earth a strike, you want to hit the spot and then push up here, um, up the hill. But he can't just get troops along the baseline of the hill to, like, set up for, you know, a counterattack immediately. So he has to spend quite a bit of time, if he was to build up a counterattack, driving down the road and getting up to the hill... And by that time, the troops will just be not shocked anymore and be back in the foxholes to deal with any attacks. Exactly. Exactly. Now, we're actually going to see the IL-2 moving in over here to try to engage that Stug-4. Not even bothering to go and put the bombs on, actually. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> lost vision here. That's a, that's a shame. Uh, Guard Squad's going to find himself riding alone in green fields with the sun on his face before too much longer. Yep, that was that was a choice. Not a good one. No, no, not even remote. Oh my gosh, look at this naval warfare is going to be aimed. No, 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 no. I we, we've kind of you know accepted that people use MLRS for counter battery, but no, this is as way too valuable of a piece for just a bit of counter battery. Yes, it is. No, that's... Yes, like a, it is. Exactly. 50 mils. <laughs> and and the best thing is, those 50 mils don't have that much in terms of ammunition left. <laughs> They're both dead. Congrats, you killed it. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge misplay. There's no way he's getting onto his like, southern position now. No. It's no. way too built up. And just in the opposite lung position, he's getting kicked out. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, I, 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 I was really hoping he was going to hit the summit, and like you said, he went, he wasn't going to be able to kill it, but he would have weakened it at least severely, and at that point, maybe, just maybe, he could have brought in the other naval buffer, had one reload, and then fire one, and then the other pretty quickly. 
Now, if you look to the northern side, what we're going to see is we're seeing the 122. So watch at 35 seconds as uh, Soap's position gets washed away as Step Knight starts, uh, you know, stepping back to the oldies here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty effective rod. Some of the Vogue are going to be out of it, but they're, they're only Vogue Deutsche. Well, let's be honest here, too. The Vogue Deutsche, if you shoot in their zip code, they're going to have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, 10 seconds until the beginning of death, and then you'll see the Camrati and the guards going from east to west here. As they start marching off towards, uh, well, I was going to say the Protzen Heights, but that's a very, very different thing. <laughs> um, but the Volksdeutsche, here we go. First rounds coming on in. So, the, like you said, the Volksdeutsche have survived, but one of the, actually, one of the vehicles went down. I think the, the 220 oh, just, got, just got hit. And while the Volksdeutsche, the, the, the Volksdeutsche 3 are moving up to the northern side, and we're actually seeing an entire new column of Pigrens and Lucinari being moved on in. You know, I actually expected the Sobis to be a little bit more aggressive here. Ooh, that concentrated one's going to be delicious. That's going to be really, really rough. But we'll see. Yeah, it seems like he's just trying to finish up the real initial assault or attack force here from the German side before he makes any push. But even then, he doesn't really even... There's not much pressure for him to push. He's got that nice plus two. He's got a decent defensive position. Mars are just like the Germans as batch ahead against the rule, especially now with a whole heap of T-34s being brought on in. Yeah, but you know what, like, then I, <clears throat> you know, I'm looking at the 81 millimeters as they're engaged in the back lines. I, I agree there. That I can agree with. I, you know, just back to the southern side, that, that was such a unique decision to take a 300 millimeter tube artillery and to engage two light mortars. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Um, now, the lungs are being aggressed on. We're seeing Volksdeutsche, we're seeing Legionari, we're seeing uh, Pioneer Furos. And that would be fine, except that the convicts are more scary, I would argue, than those that the people, the people's army of uh, soon to be East Germany. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to aggress on three DP-28s. That's just, that's not going to go well. No, no. And not, not good at all. No, certainly not. I have three more squads being brought on in to kind of get a reserve going on there. We're seeing 82 mils being uh, kind of moved from the southeast back behind the eastern lung or western lung, depending on your perspective here. Um, hmm. The JU-87 is going to be brought on with the cannons. So he might be able to pick off maybe one of these T-34s, but the ZSU is still right there. Yeah, that's that's a nasty anti-aircraft race. Like, I'll probably one of the best ones in the game, so... Yeah, the... Duke is not going to have much of a chance. There's just so much armor here, even if he killed one, it doesn't matter. It's a whole bunch of T-34s. Well, yeah, yeah, and you're right, you said about the ZSU being one of the deadliest kind of anti-air... Yeah, that... Um, I don't want to say that the magical name of a group of people who, you know, maybe went to the Holy Land on, let's say, hey, pilgrimages back in the medieval times, but... The ZSU, the, the vehicle that shall not be named, and the CGMC line, those things by themselves, absolutely brutal. That 37 mil plus the suppression for the 12 sevens, always good. And the mobility. Like, it's, yes. if you have a little bit of micro, you can just very easily get out of arms ray. You, you kill an airplane, you move. Exactly. Mobility is quite nice. Good idea. Uh, now, we are going to see... Okay, here we go. Second naval go for Barrage... Aimed at the slopes. I'm going to keep an eye on that when it goes off here because the northern side we are going to see the final artillery from one off map and another one going off here in a minute. Probably not going to necessarily kill a ton, but we'll suppress the bejesus out of that Flak 36 and potentially, potentially knock out those mortars. Yes. But we're some good hits. Neighbor Effa. Yes, down south, the first rockets are up. They are going in that. This, this is the, yeah, there we go. Okay. This is what I was hoping for. This is the kind of devastating strike. This is how you reduce this and you force the tanks back. Yeah. And we're seeing now also the problem that just the geography is the area. He's moving up a two stack fours with no recon support or no infantry support. You know, it's a follow up with the neighbor Effa strike. But it's not going to be enough. And like you said, if he had like another neighbor effort two here, 
and then oh we yeah, had two neighbor elves here mm -hmm. and then you get like four you get four barrages on that hill right you do one reload shoot again you probably can reken it down enough where you can actually push up through with some infantry which is what he's getting but it's going to be a little bit too late yeah and even bringing in these dogs right now it, it's it's a great idea um the thought process is, is the right one but an unsupported one is not the the way forward yep in that long position this is going to screw him over because losing these his lung means that if he tries to do a push down on that road and you know t-34s just pivot down they can just shoot into the side as he tries to push up onto the hill what you're saying here is that when he loses the lungs he's going to get it harder and harder to breathe yes yes that, that does have an effect on people yeah yeah i would certainly say so uh the <laughs> And the IL-2, the flying brick coming on through, again, with the 37 mils, just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, the 88 mil trying desperately to suppress. Thankfully, it doesn't get hit too hard by those mortars. But when one Shamaviki squad is pushing back for Volksdeutsche and the other Pioneer Fuhrer are desperate to kind of keep things kind of, you know, let's say fair, so to speak. Yeah, this is this is going from bad to worse, I would argue, pretty quickly. Yeah. Soap's getting quite cleaned up, you could say. Yes, yes. Um, now, we don't want to kind of cast any aspersions over here, or otherwise he's going to wash our mouth out with himself. <laughs> um, but we are going to see the lung's going to go down as this 233 is going to be engaged by the T-34 at less than 500 meters, and there we go. Actually, less than 400 meters, really. Um, and the Volksdeutsche, as, as plucky as they may be, not going to get on through. Back down south, the guards with the, the double DPs, yeah, these guys are going to be struggling up the hillside over here under constant fire if they move anything closer. So, I don't know. I feel like there's a, this is a, there's a times two coming here soon, but yeah. I do want to see as this artillery barrage strikes the northern side because I feel like this is the knockout punch. Yeah, we'll do a times two after the RT drops. Sounds like a great idea. Um, Now, let's be clear here, folks. This is a hard match to kind of run with when you have the Stokes matched up against as much of the heavy tanks as you do. But I think, like you said, Rang, if you have those pack 43s, the super heavy tanks you're going to be coming up against against inside of most Soviets, you don't need to take cards upon cards, but take a single card of it to give yourself a little bit of flexibility. Some get out of jail free cards, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much, it comes all back to the whole run up when Shep that is match kind of devolved into Step Knight just stepped up to the plate and got a bit higher. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, we're saying the Nibble Buffer is going to get repositioned over here. This Strafniki is going to get inside this house. Um, he's behind enemy lines, so to speak, right now. Although he's kind of making his own. And he's carving his Legion already to pieces. Oh, my God. God damn. Mildly amused by the fact that constantly just says holding fire and then just continues to fire anyway. Um, but that's a GG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, double KD seems about right, like, especially if you just look at the chronology here. Yeah, once you get past the five-minute mark, you can tell we're just... It does, yeah, from five minutes to 14 minutes, it's three dead Soviets, and it's, like, really cheap stuff. Yeah, that just explains everything. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. And by the way, the, the dead Soviet things were in the northern side. Those are all mm -hmm. north, so... Yowza. Uh, kills. The ISU, as you might expect, does very well at kicking puppies. Um, the IS-1, scarier than actually Killy, which is exactly what an IS-1 is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I mean, geez, when you have... And the, the other ISU, when you kill two Stokes with an assault gun, that's, you know, it's not great. Yeah. You're, you're soaking quite effectively from the Soviet perspective. Soap, on the other hand... The naval buffer, the killiest thing here, had he just targeted that northern, sorry, the slope, not the northern slope, but the actual slope in general, that could have been a beautiful, beautiful counterpunch. Yeah, yeah, if he got both of them, got a few barrages in, the end pushed up, like, he could have actually had a good chance of getting the game back down south and actually making something happen rather than just completely collapsing all over. Yep. Kind of folding like a cheap card table, unfortunately, after that that immediate push down south. So I let's not take this away from Step Knight. That was a very well conceived push. Um, and just unfortunately, Soap, which just wasn't able to kind of push back the other direction. Indeed. But unless you have anything further to say, I think it's time we wash our hands of this particular replay. 
<laughs> Sounds good, Khan. Sounds good. Oh, folks, until next time, then. I'm Khan Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.